All right, guys. I think I see it. I think it's here. All right. What do we have here? A box. Let's bring this thing inside. Well, hello, everybody. We have here a $130 bagpipe from Amazon. There's been a couple of unboxings and play testings of flutes, saxophones, other things here on YouTube, and I thought I would give it a try with an Amazon bagpipe. So we're looking here at uh, all the labels. It, uh, according to this, it's a bagpip. Um, yeah, so, and the origin is SKT, whatever that might mean. So let's go ahead and open this up. As you can see, it's uh, completely unopened here. So got a little bit of tape here. Let's go ahead and uh, dive in. Okay, some tape over there. All right. And okay, so comes in a little duffel of sorts. Got a zipper here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull out the the instrument. It's wrapped in in plastic here. It smells a bit of uh, polyurethane or something. Comes with a uh, bagpipe tutor and adjustment book. We'll be reviewing that here shortly. Oh, even comes with a a practice channer. Interesting and. Our box of, of reeds. So it's got synthetic reeds as well as some cane reeds. Let's go ahead and take a look at all this. It's got a thing, a purple string of some sort. Assume that's for the joints. So yeah, we have um, kind of a, do these adjust? So you can kind of take a look at these right here. We got uh, not an unreasonable looking drone read here. I'm just trying to see if they adjust from the bottom or not, or if it's kind of like an old SM90. It kind of looks like a balance tone overall, but perhaps without the adjustment bit here at the bottom. So, okay, but enough of that for right now. It even has the little place where like a balance tone style read would uh, go in there. So balance tone style reads here. We got some cane reads for everything here. And a couple reads for the practice channer, but let's get to the the real thing. Get this uh, this bag off here. Let's see what we have going on here. All right, so that is off. Okay, so it is black in color, but what's that mean? Let's go ahead and kind of take it apart. Pretty tight right here, and. So you can see it's black, but in the bore, not black. So this has been painted or finished in some way to make it black on the outside. So, okay. So first we're just gonna kind of take it all apart, make sure that there's no cracks or anything weird going on there. Okay, so there's hemp on the joints, base bottom. Again, if you can see in there with the light that it's not black on the inside, but is black on the outside. The mounts are, well, that spins, but that spins on a lot of pipes. But the mounts themselves, the projecting mounts, are snug there. Here's the middle. And again, see it's brown on the inside. So I'm assuming that's shisham wood, which doesn't tend to work all that great. But we're going to give a full play test on these and see what happens. Okay, and then the same thing here. See the brown on the inside. Mounts. So, hemp's on there. Okay, real decent valve, nice and airtight. Um, kind of interesting old white mouthpiece. Doesn't make up all that great. Pretty long. When I test this, I'll probably have to use my own blowpipe because I'm 5'6", and this looks a little long see, in comparison to, to mine. So... All right, and then the chanter, okay? Soul is on there. Again, as you can see in the light there, brown on the inside, black on the outside, so it has been painted. 
And then you have the bag itself. Okay, so what kind of material? We're gonna go ahead and take this bag cover off to inspect this bag. Pardon me for a second while I get this off. Okay, here we go. So we have the bag. It's a synthetic material of some sort, though it feels more like wetsuit type material than it does normal pipe bag material. Uh, I'm gonna grab some quirks right over here. And I think we'll start by seeing if this bag is airtight. There are no other supplies that I see so there's no corks or anything supplied with this. Now my first bagpipe back in 1996 when I got started was of uh, Middle East origin. And it did come actually with a number of supplies, corks and such, and a leather bag uh, and some seasoning even. But it looks like they've moved to synthetic bags. But if we're gonna test this bag, if we're gonna test these pipes in this bag, it's gotta be airtight. We'll go ahead and use the supplied mouthpiece. So I got quirks in all of it, and we'll see if this bag is airtight. I'm gonna go ahead. I don't know where this has been. I'm gonna we'll cleanse the ends of that for just a second. And clean that off. No need to get sick here. All right, here goes nothing. So it's a, a slightly unusual shape, and I am hearing some leaks. It might be around this cork, though. Okay, that was just the cork not done all the way. The bag is quite flexible. It uh, it definitely I can I can feel it stretching as I inflate it. That being said. It is uh, apparently airtight. We're gonna give this just a beat or two and uh, see how it does. I'm just gonna stick it here on the floor real quick. All right, now this bag has nearly completely deflated. So it's airtight for a little bit, but not for too terribly long. Let's take this one actual cork stopper out, make sure that wasn't our weak point. Let's inflate this again and give it one more try. So we have now all rubber stoppers All right, we're gonna give this a minute and we're gonna see. And I'm not sure the neck is gonna be able to be playable or not without it kinking, but we'll give it a try. But you can see the angle of the blowpipe is, is really pretty extreme. Um, I'd have to rotate the bag to about 45 degree angles from the welt. And the welt is pretty lumpy, uh, big and uneven. It's almost more the shape of an Illin pipe bag, to be honest than it is the shape of a Highland pipe bag, but we're gonna give this a try first. And I could actually feel right there some of this seam gave just a little under my fingers as I inflated it. But it's, uh, it's holding. So we're gonna go ahead and test it with this bag and see how it does. All right, I wanted to show giving these reeds a really good college try before giving up on them and perhaps trying something else. Now again, the beginner would just be getting this uh, set of pipes as is with these reeds and trying to make them work. Now, since earlier in the initial unboxing, I was able to determine that they are basically uh, a balanced tone style. The, it does extend out uh, for tuning, which is kind of nice. That said, in the few minutes I've been messing with these already, I cannot get them to really work. Uh, the fit and finish is, is it's tight, they're hard to move. Uh, the reeds themselves look poorly cut and constructed. Um, I don't know if you can see the edges are not particularly smooth, but you're gonna hear me trying to do some bridle adjustments and everything else to make these reeds fit in the pipes they came with. Got that reed in there. Ha <laughs> ha. 
just a little bit more. It's already pretty open, but it's shutting down. A little more open. And it's shutting down with very, very reasonable pressure. I am not blowing terribly hard. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to spring the tongue just a little. I'll actually grab a, a business card for this. Not something I tend to do with quality made reeds. And looking down the reed, it's seated on there okay. But the spring doesn't seem to be helping too terribly much. open yet still. Now it's shutting down really quickly. So let's take it really far the other direction. Now try springing it again. It's making some noise. We'll put it in the stock and see if maybe, just maybe it will uh, work in the diameter of the stock. I don't foresee that, but you, you never know. All right, on to the next one for the next tenor. That one goes in pretty well. Let's see. That's not really sounding at all. Let's move this bridle down. and spring the tongue, it looks pretty close to the body. So you can see that reed's just not, it's not even functioning. It's its squealing, it's, it's not making any sort of real noise. It's not wanting to vibrate. That's the best we've gotten and it's all the way open. So we know this reed is a bust. In fact, I'm even gonna Grab a Sharpie real quick, and I'm just going to put a red X on the tongue so I know that that's, this one's just, it doesn't work. Nothing we can do about that. All right, and we got one more here on the base. It's seated well. Let's see if it makes any noise. Sounds too close. Let's open it up. It's similar to the sound of the other that middle tenor was making kind of just that wheeze. Um, and now these do have end plugs. Let's make sure they're not in the closed position. And sure enough, it is not in the closed position. So we started getting a bit of the growl, a little a uh, uh, bass sound out of it. But at this point, the bridle is, is quite literally all the way up against the other band that holding the reed in place. So that's as far as it can actually go up. I guess I got another half millimeter or so. It's shutting down like this other one. Maybe in the stock it won't do that. So we have two of the reeds making some sort of noise. We have one reed not making any noise at all. So let's try uh, with some of these cane reeds and see if we can make these playable. Uh, I got a couple tricks in my sleeve. So let's see what we can do. All right, so we're moving on to some of the cane reeds now. I'm gonna try this cane base reed. Uh, I got a stock here to kind of help with uh, the mouth blowing of this reed. <laughs> Air is just passing through it. There is a bridle on it. We're going to go ahead and move it down and see if that helps at all. Get this thing vibrating. Again, it's just... Air is just passing through it without causing vibration. Ah, 
obviously you would never remove the bridle to that degree on a functioning reed. So the edge of this cane reed where the tongue was cut, it was cut too crudely and the reed's not sealing. When the reed's all the way closed, it should actually be basically airtight and this one cannot be. So again, with a red X, I'm gonna just go ahead and mark that this reed is not functional. So we're gonna go ahead and put that balance tone style uh, reed in there. And uh, I do want to say balance tone style. Uh, it's got the grooves for the moisture and everything else. That being said, I play a balance tone in my Heritage Henderson pipes, and it's absolutely amazing. So these might be in the style, but not the quality or performance that you get out of an actual balance tone read. So I want to make that clear. So we got that one in there. Let's see if we can make any of these uh, cane uh, drone reads sound. I think this one's going to be similar to the bass in that the air is just passing through it very quickly. It's not sealing in any way. I mean, even if I hold the tongue down, with I'll hold the tongue down with my tongue, it, the air is just passing readily through it. The bridle almost seems like it's glued in place. It's moving now. Okay. So we're gonna try to close this bridle up a little bit to see if we can cause this thing to actually vibrate, make the, the air going through it buzz. And again, it's not of this. And again, I'm trying to use their materials. I could put uh, a silicone band or something else on here that I might use on my own cane reeds. But I want to use the materials they're providing, if at all possible. And if I'm not going to use their materials, I'll probably sit, uh, put a set of Easy Drones in here. So again, this is, I'll stick it in here just to make sure. Air is just passing through it. It's not vibrating. Uh, it's not shutting down either. So this reed is just a, a no-go. And we have one more cane reed here. See, you should be able to get some sound out of your reed. That's pretty good. And see, then it shuts down. And once it shuts down, I'm not able to get air through it. So this might actually be a functional reed. Let's see what happens. Make sure we don't have a... No. It's stopping immediately, making sure there's no obstructions in the bore, of which there's not. Raise that bridle just a little bit. Let's try this again. Okay. Nope, now it's now it's shut down. So let's go ahead. I got this business card here. I'm gonna give the tongue just a light springing. Grab a paper clip. All right, so I got the paper clip here and I'm going to insert it in and that little kind of hook there is gonna help spring the reed open so we can get some sound out of it. Let's give this a try now in the pipe itself. So I have it sprung a little far. We're gonna back it out just a little bit so it's not sprung nearly so far. This is the most successful read of the of the bunch. And even shut down. So I think we have a pretty good setup here. Uh, let's move on to the chanter and see if we can't get the reads it came with balanced with the chanter to some degree and see if we can make that play. So moving on to the chanter, we have the two reads that it came with right here in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and open up the tuning app. I'm going to use Bra Tuner. And we're going to see where this these reeds might be pitching at. I'm going to go ahead and stick some earplugs in. It's not a great tone, but it is sounding. It's 
pitching currently at about 464. The octave is pretty nicely balanced right there. Let's see how the rest of this is going. And I'll, I'll go ahead and hold the tuner up here in a second. Okay. It's a... Uh, it's not as bad as it could be, really. So, there we go. So you can kind of see where it's tuning. The A, the C, the E, and the high A are all pretty reasonable. The others are not. So, okay. So the B and D and high G are all sharp. So I have a couple pieces of tape here. Let's go ahead and see if we can't bring those in with some tape. But the reed is very much on the easy side of, of playing. If we can get this all up and going, maybe put a pressure gauge against it. That F's pretty sour. We're going to give the reed a squeeze. Sometimes just a, a good, solid little squeeze can bring the F up on a normal Highland Shanna reed. Let's see if it does it with this one. That F is still remarkably flat. So uh, let's grab one more piece of tape. I'll just take it off this channel right here for that high G, and also the low G, which is, is, is quite off as well. So to tune the low G, we're going to use the tone holes on the bottom. Still quite sharp. I'm actually going to cover one tone hole entirely. The reed's pitching up pretty quickly. We're up to four... 68 now, so it's raised by 4 hertz. I'm mouth blowing it. I don't mind doing that right now. I don't mind getting a little moisture into this reed. It, who knows if it's ever been played or when it was last tested. Now that G's well flat compared to the A. We can hear it. Seems to want to kind of go back to the 464 now. So as I'm playing it, the C is starting to flatten. The B is starting to flatten as well. So let's stick another piece of tape on that high G, see if we can get that a little closer. It's almost off the chart on here, so I'm going to have to cover much of the hole. Very sensitive on that that bottom note. Um, just for giggles, we're going to go ahead and take this readout and just try this other one. It seemed really, really easy. So... Now, that one's... That's not good. So let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and put that red X on this one just so we don't have to be confused in the future. But that guy is done. 
Okay, so we have the chanter. It's not great um, to really fix it. This F is going to need to be carved, and it's a it's quite a small hole, so that doesn't surprise me. But that's beyond what I'm willing to do in this step of the video. So we're going to try to put the instrument together in its original pipe bag with the drone reeds and the chanter reed and everything that it was supplied with, and we're going to see if it plays. All right, hold on. We're going to give this thing a good go. We have the original blowpipe. It's awfully long. We'll see if I can get it under my arm. Might have to take the actual mouthpiece off to make this work. Uh, the channer with supplied reed, all the supplied reeds. Let's see if we can make this thing even make some sound. <laughs> Check this valve. That seems tight here, but it seems like it's leaking back a little bit as I'm playing. So, I think that says everything we need to know. Now, I wanted to take a second here, and I'm going to fly in a clip of me playing previously on these very bagpipes here, which are a set of uh, Peter Henderson pipes by R.G. Hardy. So you can hear a comparison sound of, of the Amazon Pakistani-made bagpipe compared to, uh, in this case, a Scottish-made set of pipes um, from R.G. Hardy. So now we're going to cut back and forth between the same clip of these Hardys and the clip of me playing the Pakistani pipes. Again, I want to note that the microphone is exactly the same microphone in exactly the same place with exactly the same settings. I was doing everything I can to make this comparison as uh, accurate as possible. No adjustments to the EQ to bring up bass frequencies, to bring down treble frequencies or anything like that. Um, I do have a minor EQ uh, set for when I'm playing the pipes, but it's the exact same setting that you hear in both clips. So let's go back and forth and hear them directly. <laughs> These drones are not with the supplied reeds. They're not able to be made uh, playable or tunable. They shut down readily. They're difficult to strike in if they sound at all. The chanter is surprisingly functional. Uh, that being said, the F is out of tune. You would need to like dremel it, do something to bring it in. But other than that, uh, it's not an unreasonable amount of tape, except for maybe that high G, which uh, I think you can see it's quite covered, but I've seen Highland pipe channers that had to be covered like that too. So uh, the bag is, is tremendously awkward in its shape. Um, the blowpipe comes out basically 
completely horizontally, which is why the drones are falling off as I'm trying to put this in my mouth. Uh, the length of it ended up being not that big of an issue, uh, just given the awkward shape of everything else. I'm not sure it being shorter would have helped anything. So I think to wrap up this initial part of the video, uh, I, I cannot recommend a set of the Amazon $130 bagpipes as a low cost alternative to another set of pipes. McCallum makes a brilliant set of Polypenco pipes, the P-Zeros, for around 880 bucks at time of this filming with functional reeds, functional bag, everything uh, you would need. Now it doesn't include a case, but this didn't, this had a duffel. It didn't have a case. So even at the 880, you would likely have to spend a few more dollars for everything you'd need, but it would have everything you need and it'd be a great instrument that would uh, give you years and years of joy. This would give you hours and hours of frustration as it currently is. That being said, in the next video, I'm going to attach these to another pipe bag. We're going to set, uh, put a set of easy drones in. We're going to see if a regular uh, Highland Channer Reed might be able to get this better in tune and what it might take to make these playable. But that's going to be the second part. The first installment was just testing these as is, as a beginner instrument that uh, is affordable and it doesn't really tick any of the boxes it needs to tick. Um, so there you go. I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper. If you found this video useful or entertaining, uh, share it, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video. That all is super helpful for me. I really like making this stuff. And uh, the more I can do that, the more fun things like this I can try to review. So it's definitely been an experiment and we're going to continue with it in part two next time.